This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Models Memories Weekly, episode 99. Models Memories is a show about nothing and is filmed in front of a live studio audience. This is a show where I talk about painting, modeling, and working experiences from the week. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Jay, you put out three YouTube videos a week. How could you possibly have more to say? Well, I do, and here goes. This week, Games Workshop showed off a new Seraphon model, gave us a deep dive on the new kill team, the Adeptus Arbites, and kind of have moved back on something that they've been working on. But first, I want to talk about some squares. If you're looking for squares, then Squarespace is the place to be. They have all the squares in the form of dozens of award-winning templates so that you can have the website of your dreams. We all want something. Fame, fortune, a bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich. And you know what's the only thing standing between you and achieving your dreams? Your own professional-looking website. With a whole suite of design tools, Squarespace offers flexible layouts, color palettes, fonts, photo editing, background banners, animations. No matter what you're looking for, Squarespace has you covered. And a whole host of social media features, including comment sections so that you can engage directly with your audience and get feedback to help you on your website journey. You'll get that BLT in no time. So head on over to Squarespace for a free trial. When you're ready to rock and roll, use our code EONSBATTLE to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Let's start off with that new miniature, because I love the Seraphon. Let cosmic power flow through your Seraphon with the Saurus Astrolith Bearers. Ah, it's the new Seraphon are fantastic. I'm holding my breath for some new skinks. I like the old skinks. I think the old skinks are lovely, but man, the new Saurus Warriors are so nice. And the old ones were like 20 years old. And so are the skinks, probably more than 20 years old. So I'd love to see what Games Workshop does with some new ones, but man, these guys look like, they look like what you actually think the Seraphon look like. Like if you play Total War Warhammer, that's what the Seraphon actually look like. And then if you like Google Seraphon armies and you see people's old Warhammer fantasy Seraphon, they look a little rough. They look pretty rough, especially since they were on square bases because they had to be ranked up. And so everybody was like, really tight next to each other because there was no room. But now that everything is moving to lovely round bases, there's a little bit more room to spread out. And yeah, I am definitely, I'm definitely gonna start a Seraphon army. I really hope that the stuff that they showed off at LVO becomes the new start collecting or combat patrol for the Seraphon because I really want all those miniatures. And this model is beautiful. Ah, the gigantic stone banner, all of the lovely gold. The Saurus Warrior with loincloth. That was that was a small critique I had for the old Saurus Warriors. Was they just uh, they just had a bulge, <laughs> just were they were smooth down there like a Ken doll. And so uh, I think a, a very nice little kind of Aztec inspired loincloth is a lovely detail. But man, am I excited to paint these guys! They just have so many things that are going to be fun to paint. The way I like to do gold is I actually paint everything silver and then I airbrush on a little bit of orange, an orange ink through the airbrush and it just turns everything such a vibrant gold and you can control the saturation. So if you just dust it, you'll get a very desaturated gold or if you really, really blast it, you'll get a super crazy vibrant orange gold. And I'm really excited to do that on these Seraphon. It's gonna be like, they, you know, they look pretty darn good and then the last step is gonna be that little airbrush ink spray. Ah, oh, really? Really excited, and man, does he look awesome with his club and his humongous helmet and the weird staff with the little pokeball in the middle being contained by lightning, the energy of the cosmos. The, the Seraphon are kind of alien, which is weird because they're dinosaurs. Like, they're a weird thing in the world of Age of Sigmar, but they have these plans and they can see the future and sometimes they're kind of at the mercy of these plans. Like sometimes they will engage in war just because they know in the future that they do engage in this war. And so it's like, did, did they decide to do that? Or were they always going to do that? Or did they fulfill the prophecy that's been ordained that they're gonna go into this battle? They're a really, really weird alien faction that is very, very not alien because they're Aztec dinosaurs but I really, really like them. And I hope Games Workshop comes out with lots and lots of new Seraphon models. Gotta have some new skinks and not that much else. I think everything else is pretty solid. The Pterodon Riders are fantastic. A lot of the new stuff got revealed at LVO. I don't know what else they would really need, except for definitely some more chameleon, uh, chameleon dart blower guys. They've got like these little poison darts. 
Those guys, they had some lovely, lovely ones for Warcry. And so just take those designs and make them into a full plastic kit. Ooh, and there's some really, really bad fine cast, like, um, oh, what's the dinosaur with the armored back? That, that guy, they have some resin ones of those that are uh, showing their age. But if they look anything like this new Saurus warrior with a gigantic banner, they're gonna be lovely. And speaking of things I am very excited for, the new kill team, the Adeptus RBTs. They actually had an article on Warhammer Community of how to pronounce certain words, and all of the words that they picked were things that nobody ever gets wrong, except for RBTs. I've always said Arbites or Arbites, Ar 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 because that just sounds so cool, the Arbites, the Arbites. But nope, it's BDs. Oh, look at the way the wee bitties. Oh, the RBDs. Like, it sounds like something that you would like name a chihuahua. It's not, uh, it doesn't inspire fear. And these guys are all Judge Dredd super cops. But uh, it's also weird to have cops in 40K. Like, are they arresting people and putting them in super jail? Because it seems like the name of the game for the Imperium of Mankind is you just kill your enemies, always. Or you do something even worse, like turn them into a servitor or an Argoflagellant. But I guess I guess the uh, the Arbides are putting the cuffs on people and walking them to a, a a police car and like holding onto their head so they don't actually bump their head and they put them in the back. It's <laughs> it's a concept we haven't really seen fleshed out since Rogue Trader. And back in Rogue Trader, everything was very different, so it kind of made sense. And people would make these custom rhinos for them to to ride around in. And like it it was Judge Dredd. You could play Judge Dredd in Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader, but. This is the first time we are seeing them again. The Adeptus RBD's Extraction Squad are bristling with correctional gadgets. This looks like a very interesting kill team. I'm very interested to see the rules because my worry is it's gonna be very hard to make them feel different than all of the other like seven human teams in Kill Team. I mean, the Imperial Navy Breachers also have shotguns and riot shields, so it'll be interesting to see the rules for these guys. And speaking of wanting to see the rules, I want to see a name pron pronunciation for this team. We've got the Vigilant, the Subductor, the prote Protector Exactant, the Gunner, that one's easy, Malak Malakotar, the Revel the Revelatum, the Revelatum, Leashmaster, that one's easy too, and the RVR Cyber Mastiff, the Popo. Oh, what a cute little doggo. There's a lot of doggos in Kill Team. We got the Crute Hounds. There's the doggo for the Rogue Trader Kill Team. And is there another dog? I want to say there's one more dog, but I might be thinking of Necromunda. I think I am thinking of Necromunda, but still three dogs. That's kind of a lot. It'll be interesting to see if this dog has a base movement of eight inches because that is what the Crute Hound has. And it is the, the best movement in the game of Kill Team but it'll be only time will tell. These models are very interesting. I feel like I flip flop on them every single time I look at them. They feel very 40K and they would look really, really good standing next to an Inquisitor, but they also feel like they don't have that much going on. Maybe I just watched the Stallone Judge Dredd movie way too many times because I love that costume. It's super incredibly ridiculous. Where these somehow don't feel that ridiculous, they feel like knights of the round table with a little bit of shotguns and some eagles, which is what they should be. Like Games Workshop did a fine job. They just don't have, they don't have a little extra spice. I'd like to see maybe some top knots because that's a very popular thing to do with silly 40k stuff. Some of them do, some of the more important characters like the Protector Exactant, but Overall, they kind of just look like pretty good armored humans. They don't scream police to me, which is a shame because that's exactly what they are. But I like them. I do like them and I'm excited to get them and paint them up and see how they play. Because I have played a lot of human teams. In fact, I actually played a game with the veteran guardsmen this week and I won. I beat Nick and his Breacha Boys, not Breacha Boys, the Orc Commandos. Ah, it was so, it felt so good to finally win a game of Kill Team. But yeah, the, 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 the great thing about the veteran guardsmen is that they can take 14 bodies. And so you can out activate anybody. 
But the downside is that pretty much every single individual operative sucks. Where these guys are probably going to have, I would hope they have a 3 up to hit. They'll probably have a 4 up to hit with shenanigans, but a 3 up to hit would be lovely. That would put them at the same level as the Tempestus Scions, which is another excellent kill team. A kill team from the original compendium is actually still very, very playable. And probably they probably have a similar armor. Probably a 4 up, 4 up save. These guys do fulfill a weird role in the Imperium of Mankind as the police, because, it, you know, in the world of Warhammer, there is only war. But I guess there's also, like, civilians and cops and they're just general goings on of a normal society, so. I mean, presumably, you know, in, in the world of Judge Dredd, often they people would be summarily executed, so, uh, you know, presumably they don't use their handcuffs very often. Also, there's not a, like, are they putting handcuffs on gene stealers <laughs> or Eldar or you can't put a handcuff on orcs? You couldn't build handcuffs that could possibly contain their strength. Handcuffs would only be useful for not even for humans, because you have super mega humans like the Goliath gang from Necromunda. Unless you had some ultra, ultra titanium handcuffs, you could not contain those guys either, so. I guess in almost all situations, they would use the uh, the shotgun to detain or apprehend their suspect, their suspect, as opposed to uh, just putting reading them their Miranda rights. Ah, oh, wouldn't that be a wonderful thing? 40k Miranda rights. <laughs> what would that be? You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Like, what would the 40k version of that be? That should have been, that should be a Warhammer community article. Just somebody write a fun, some fun lore about that. If anybody at Games Workshop is listening from their writer's team, please, please write a 40k Miranda write for the Adeptus Arbides. Ah, I hope it's in the rule book. That would be a lovely, lovely little quote, a little bit of flavor text to really get me excited about these guys. But overall, they're really, really cool. Some things, like they look, they look very, Generic is the wrong word, but I don't want to say boring either, but I can, I almost feel like I already know what they're going to be. I mean, I see gunners, comm specialist, medic, the two close, co generic close combat guys, the leader with a variety of weapons, but you're always going to take the really, really good pistol. It's just tricky. It's tricky to make a human team. That's why I loved some of the weirder teams, like the Crute Farstalker Kin Band or the Necron Herotech Circle, because they're just weird, different stuff. I mean, a giant Kreptek on a 50 millimeter base that can reanimate his fallen brethren. Like, I like when they have to really, really kind of throw out the rule book and come up with all new stuff, as opposed to here's the 10 guys and we can use the template for a 10 man kill team. The Eldar fall into this trap a lot too. I mean, there's not that big a difference between the uh, the Void Scarred Pirates and the normal like 10 Cabalite Warriors or 10 Eldar Rangers, Eldar Guardian, Guardians, Guardian Squad. Like sometimes, sometimes kill, uh, kill teams can feel a little samey and that's probably just because there's 30. And so it's really, really hard to make 30 different teams feel really, really special and unique, but when they are special and unique, it is something really, really special. But speaking of things that are very, very unique, these guys are going to have rules for Big 40K, but they also seem to have a transfer sheet designed for Big 40K. Not only does it have just generic squad markings, or I guess precinct markings because they're the police, but they also have some vehicle markings. And that opens up a lot of really, really cool painting and modeling opportunities. Like you might be able to get some rhinos and put some of the Adeptus RBD symbols on the side. They also have hilariously chalk outlines, like chalk victim outlines, which is kind of the greatest thing ever. They'd probably be pretty tricky to get on a base because these guys are almost certainly on 28.5 millimeter bases. And so you're only gonna be able to get like a little bit of an arm and a head on there. But some objective markers of the chalk outlines would be absolutely lovely. And I might have to break out like a 40 millimeter base or maybe even a 50 and just put that together and have it be like a, I don't know what opportunities these guys can have for attack ops, but if they have like security or command and control, then I'm definitely going to be building a custom little objective for those guys to have to be their banner. Man, 
These guys are really, really fun and silly, and that is some of the best stuff in all of 40K, so. These guys, these guys get a gold star and a thumbs up. And I can't wait to see what the Drukari team is going to have. Uh, it's going to be 10 Cabalite Warriors, but what about those 10 Cabalite Warriors? What's going to make those guys special? And speaking of things that are special, Games Workshop has been phasing out their classic uh, Star Collectings for Combat Patrols. Now, Star Collectings were great because they were like $190 to $100. They came with a couple of 40k kits, usually like three and they were great because they were cheap and they got you some stuff. The problem with them was that they were a complete shotgunning of random stuff. Like the Imperial Guard one, I think, added up to almost 300 points of in-game units. And the Space Marine one was like 500 points of in-game units. And other ones were even worse. So the great thing about the Comet Patrols is that they are fairly balanced. You get about 500 points worth of army in the box, and it comes with the things you need, like troops and an HQ and usually some sort of an elite unit. And the only problem with that is that they're really, really expensive at $140. And once you crack that $100, I feel like the decision to buy becomes really, really hard. But that is what we have now from Games Workshop. Although for their new boarding actions 40k rules, they seem to be going back to the old start collectings. We saw this a little bit with the Space Marine and the Chaos Space Marine start collecting. The one that had Abaddon in it sold out almost instantly, but the Space Marine one is still available because it's not all that exciting. It comes with a Gravis Captain or a Primaris Captain in Gravis Armor, which retails for $38, five Heavy Intercessors, which retail for $60, and 10 Assault Intercessors, which also retails for $60 and it sold for $110. So that was a pretty darn good savings in that box. And I don't know if anybody really expected them to do this for all of the factions, but it certainly looks like they are gonna be doing it for all the factions. Now, they're not they're not truly star collectings because these are a limited thing, and so they're only gonna make so many copies, and when they sell out, they sell out. So I guess, if you really, really want one, you should grab one. They're not gonna be a normal product and we are gonna be stuck with the $140 combat patrols, but some of these boxes are really neat and Games Workshop just showed off three more. The Necron boarding patrol comes with the Necron Ophidian destroyers, Necron warriors, which also come with three Scarab Swarm bases because those are actually built into the sprue. And weirdly, they don't show them on the box art, but they do include them in the box count of miniatures. And a squad of Necron Lich Guard and a, ne a squad of Necron Triarch Praetorians, which actually those guys are made from the same box. So essentially, you're getting two boxes of those and you can build them however you want. And all of that stuff retails for $210 if you bought them separately. And if they're boxed up and they sell for $110, which I would expect they will because they are they just made two of these boxes for the Space Marines and Chaos Space Marines and they sold them for $110, that is $110 in savings. Although I would argue it's not really $110 of savings because nobody is spending $50 on Necron Warriors. Necron Warriors have been super devalued by Games Workshop because they come in everything. Indominus had 20 Necron Warriors in it. All three of the starter boxes for Warhammer 40k have Necron Warriors in it. They are a big part of the, what's it called, Imperium Magazine, the mail order. You just get a magazine and some models in the mail every single month. And so you can get Necron Warriors for about half that on eBay right now. So if you take like $20 off of that, it comes to $90 in savings, which is still very, very good. And I think this is a lovely, lovely spread of miniatures. The Ophidian Destroyers are a great kit, but I think a lot of Necron players probably didn't pull the trigger on them because in the uh, in beginning of 8th edition or the beginning of 9th edition, Games Workshop dropped 13 new Necron units into the game and four of those were Destroyers. I mean, you had the, um, the Hexmark Destroyer, the Locust Heavy Destroyer. And so I think the Ophidian Destroyers were probably last on the list for most Necron players because they're very, very similar to Canoptic Wraiths. Every Necron player has Canoptic Wraiths because for a decade they were the best unit in the entire Necron Codex. They were, they could move incredibly fast, they hit like an absolute truck, and way back in 6th edition they had a 3-up and vulnerable save, which was arguably way, way too powerful. They've definitely been toned down. The hitting on, they used to hit on 3s, now they hit on 4s, which is probably the nerf that they needed. 
But these new Ophidian Destroyers are proper Necrons. The Wraiths hit on fours because they're a Kanop tech unit. They're just robots. But these guys are actually Necrons. So you're kind of getting the old Wraiths back. And I think that makes for them, that makes them a very interesting unit that not a lot of people have. Nobody cares about Warriors, but nobody's going to say no to 10 more. And the Lich Guard and Triarch Praetorians are a very, very interesting unit for the Necrons. It's a really, really good unit, and I expect that they're going to perform really, really well on the new boarding actions type of terrain because they're a close combat unit with some phenomenal close combat weapons and a Necron body. So you get your reanimation protocols. You're just gen generally really, really tough. I think this is going to be a really, really solid box if you want to play on that style of terrain or if you just want stuff. I don't see a lot of people running Lich Guard or Triarch Praetorians, probably because it's five models for a really, really expensive price tag, $55 retail. But if you get kind of all the things that you haven't bought before in a box together for a nice discount, I really like the look of the Necron Boarding Patrol. It is really, really solid. A box that is maybe not quite as solid is the Grey Knights Boarding Patrol. You get Castellan Crow, which is a really, really cool model that probably all Grey Knight players already bought. And you got Grey Knight Terminator Squad and the Grey Knight Strike Squad. The retail of buying all that stuff separately comes out to $165. If the box retails for $110, which it will, probably. The savings is $55. Bucks. Not as good as any of the other boxes that Games Workshop has shown off. And the Grey Knights just don't have that much stuff. They don't have very many unique things to them and every Grey Knight player is already going to have Terminators and a Strike Squad, and I'm sure they already got Cassell and Crow because it is a lovely, lovely, gorgeous model, and the first Grey Knight in a long, long time, like the first new Grey Knight miniature from Games Workshop. So I think a lot of Grey Knight players are going to be kind of eh on this box, and it's not quite enough stuff to actually get an army of Grey Knights going. I think the Comet Patrol, even though the Grey Knights also have probably the worst Comet Patrol available in 40k, that box is probably a little bit better than this one because you, you get the baby carrier, you get the Dread Knights. So the box is fine. I'm not going to be getting it because my Grey Knights are going to be all Terminators. And so I can't take Cassell and Crow or the Strike Squad because all of my Grey Knights are going to be in Terminators, in Terminator suits. A few of them are going to be in Dreadnoughts. And I suppose I will have two normal Space Marines as pilots for my gunships. But other than that, I don't want no pesky space marines. And the Tyranid boarding patrol is another interesting one. You get a gene stealer brood, a brood lord, and two boxes of Tyranid warriors. If you were to purchase all that stuff separately, it would come out to $197 retail for a savings of $87, so almost identical to the Necron box. And I think it is also a very, very good mix of units. Now, the only downside of this box is the Gene Stealer Brood, and Gene Stealers are an excellent unit, but they are old as dirt. The Gene Stealer box came out in 2004, and you only get eight models in the box instead of 10, because the, for some reason there's only always been eight models in the box instead of 10. I don't know if that's because game, when Games Workshop originally made their Start Collecting box, they were short on sprue space and each sprue uh two sprues of gene stealers comes with four stealers so it's a it's a four sprue kit and if they put in another two sprues you would end up with 12 which is too many i mean it's not really too many but you would often leave two models off to the side and not play with them the gene stealers desperately desperately need a refresh because they are one of the most popular iconic things in all of warhammer and their models are so old and terrible. I've put together about 30 gene stealers and they're a nightmare. They have six limbs and every single one of those limbs has horrible, horrible mold lines that need to be scraped off. And you end up rubbing off a lot of detail and there's not that much detail in there originally because they're hand sculpted models in plastic, but they're hand sculpted models. And so the details are a little bit soft and mushy and they're all posed the same. You have a lot of freedom in the arms, but all of the heads have to be looking directly forward because they have really, really weird necks. And Gene Stealers should not be on 25 millimeter bases. I don't know why they're still sold on 25 millimeter bases. I guess it's because the way that they're designed fits perfectly into the slotted 25 base. And it would be kind of, there'd be too much room on the slotted 32 millimeter bases, but they should be on 30. I put together all of mine on 32 millimeter bases because it is, they, 
They are ridiculous. They change so easily when you try to move them around each other. It's like monkeys in a barrel. As soon as you move one, it's grabbed onto three other models and yanked them with them. If you try to pick up a gene stealer, you got three more hanging off of it as it goes through the air. The gene stealers are terrible. Games Workshop, 10th edition, all new gene stealers. We desperately, desperately need them. Uh, they're only 35 bucks, which is cheap by Games Workshop standards, but if they tried to sell them for one penny more, man, would that not be worth it at all. The Broodlord is also a really good get. If you want to run a lot of gene stealers in your army, you definitely should have a Broodlord, and it's great to get a deal on Tyranid Warriors, because Tyranid Warriors are $60 for three models. They're very big models, standing on 40 millimeter bases, and, but it's upsetting because you kind of need a lot of them. If you want to run Tyranid Warriors in your army, you kind of need to load up. I know some armies are running um, 12 and man, does that add up really fast when it's $60 for three miniatures. And it's a hard unit to buy secondhand because each Tyranid Warrior has at least six weapon options. And if you want to make sure that you get the weapons that you want, you almost are forced to buy retail so that you have all of the bits you need. So yeah, getting... Getting six of them in this box for a nice discount is really, really nice. I might have to buy this box just so that I can have all, all the things that I would want for a kill team. The only problem is I already have a Broodlord, so maybe I can maybe I can sell that model or give it away. But still, it would still be worth it to get a deal on the Warriors because, man, our, our Necron or Tyranid Warrior is really, really expensive. But it's a good kit. It's a good kit and you get a really, really nice savings. Not exactly as nice as the Necrons, but again, the Necrons are also, you can find them really, really cheap secondhand because uh, games work. This is the, this has been the edition of the Necron. So, and hopefully the next edition will be the edition of the Tyranids because I would love to see a Tyranid range refresh. The Tyranid, a lot of their stuff is really, really old, but a lot of it really, really holds up. The Swarm Lord and the Flyerant is one of the most beautiful kits Games Workshop has ever made. Some of their newer stuff I'm not overly in love with, like the Harpy and the um, Mycetic Spore Mine, the little, the little booger with tentacles and guns sticking out of it. It's an okay model, but I would, I mean, they're not gonna redo that one because it's a pretty darn new kit. I think it came out in 2016, but I've never been the biggest fan of that particular unit. But maybe we'll get something like a little drop pod, like a little tiny drop pod for the Tyranids that you can house maybe like three warriors or one squad of um, of Ormagants or Termagants. Also, the Ormagants and Termagants I go back and forth on. They're actually very, very nice, but they're also very, very old, coming out at a similar time to the Gene Stealers in 2004. They could probably use an update, and you could probably get them both into the same kit, an ormagant termagant combo kit with some Ripper Swarms, because similarly to the Necron Warriors coming with Scarab Swarm bases on the Warrior Sprue, the Ormagons and Termagons each come with a smattering of Ripper Swarms and 40 millimeter bases so that you can build that unit, because for some reason, those units have actually never been available separately. Except on Forge World. Forge World, for a short amount of time, sold oddly different looking, tiny, spindly Necron Scarab Swarms, so you could buy them from Forge World, and they do still sell lovely Ripper Swarms for the Tyranids. That's like, got like a dozen Ripper Swarms all piled up. It's like a little wave of little goblin-y gremlin bugs. It's kind of awesome. But yeah, some some really weird... Games Workshop has been working, doing a really good job of doing the housekeeping that they need to do to make their game a lot more modern and make a lot of things make sense. Because 40K is 35 years old and a lot of stuff doesn't make any sense, but if they fix all of their old armies and they come out with lots of really, really cool old stuff like the Adeptus Arbides, I think that they are gonna be in a great spot. But speaking of all these lovely miniatures that you can play on the tabletop, do you ever need any terrain? Because if you do, then the Eons of Battle Patreon is the place to be. This month, we have the Goblin Rave Cave, our wonderful dang cave full of line of sight blocking, interlocking terrain that can build boards of all sizes for Kill Team 40K or any other miniature war game you can think of. We also make one extra episode of Eons of Battle every single week where we take a look at our viewers' miniatures and give them some critiques and ideas of how to improve their painting. We host live Discord hangouts and painting guide PDFs. And we have a new tier where you can get your name on one of my Black Templar Space Marines and you can join the Crusade. And if you're looking to pick up any miniatures or games, you should shop at Valhalla Hobby. They have a great selection of miniatures at a great price. And if you use our code EOB23, you can save 5% off your first purchase and help support the show. 
It's been a wonderful week of hobbying. I got a bunch of kill team in and I won most of my games. The last one was a pretty darn close game. Nick's behind the camera, he's, he's nodding his head. Yeah, it was really, really close. I definitely didn't get tabled, but uh... And I'm very excited for the new Adeptus Arbites, although I'm not super excited about the name. Thanks for watching.